there's a young man who's running for president by the name of Bet on My Stork. Um, and he cannot stop apologizing. This is actually really sad. He does it every month. This time he was on The View, and um, I'm going to give you the audio clip of that. Check it out. Mr. Ulrich, you've been a hot topic on the show. Um, you did a Vanity Fair cover to announce your campaign, and you said you were, quote, born to be in it. You went across the country alone on a road trip after you lost your election, and you said you, quote, sometimes help raise your kids. These are things in my mind that a female candidate wouldn't be able to get away with. Do you think you can get away with more because you're a man? And do you have any regrets about launching on the cover of Vanity Fair? You're right. Um, there are things that I have been privileged to do in my life that, that others cannot. Um, and, and I think the more that I travel and listen to people and learn from them, the clearer that comes becomes to me. Um, when women in this country are, are paid 80 cents on the dollar that a man makes, African-American women, 61 cents, Latinas, 53 cents. When you have 10 times the wealth in white America than you do in black America, when you have the largest prison population on the face of the planet, and it's disproportionately comprised of people of color, uh, the systematic foundational discrimination that we have in this country in, in every aspect of life is something that I have not experienced in my lifetime. And I've had advantages that others could not enjoy. So being aware of that um, and then doing everything in my power to help correct that, working with others, ratifying the Equal Rights Amendment, for example, so that it is beyond the shadow of a doubt that, that women will be treated equally in this country. Um, staring in the face the legacy of, of slavery and segregation and Jim Crow <coughs> and continued suppression in our economy, in our democracy, in our system of justice, it's the only way that you begin the work of repair and stop visiting those injustices on the generations that follow. So yes, we have our work cut out for us in this country. I have my work cut out for me to, to be a better per person and ensure that I'm more mindful uh, to the experience Experiences that others have had different than the experiences so that I've had. You're that Vanity Fair are those mistakes? Would you say those are mistakes? Being on the cover of Vanity Fair? Yeah, so, so maybe. It looks elitist? What? what yeah, you? yeah. I, I think it, it reinforces that, that perception of privilege. And that headline that said I was, I was born to, mm -hmm. to be in this, I, in the article, was attempting to say that, that I felt that my calling was in public service. No one is born to be president of the United States of America, oh. uh, least of all me. Um, so, so um, yeah. What about I, the part time dad thing? Yeah, so, so listen, <laughs> absolutely, and I deserved it. Uh, I, yeah, that's what absolutely. Your wife, I'm, sure I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, have I offended you? I'm so sorry. I love me. Like me. Vote for me. <laughs> I thrive off of all of your enjoyment, off of all of your acceptance. You must please accept my humble forgiveness for having ever so slightly made you feel uncomfortable or offended for a split second. <laughs> oh, God damn it, man. Holy fuck, that was sad to watch. Dude, the problem with the Vanity Fair cover is that you're a goofy little bitch. That's the problem with it. The, like, pfft, here I am, bro. I'm just gonna stand here like I'm a fucking model for Abercrombie and Fitch in the year 2003. I got a random dog next to me. So what? He's there. Whatever, bro. It's all good. I got a dog. I got a dirt road behind me. You like dirt roads? Gives me a real homey feel here, doesn't it? Gives me a real rural feel, man. Like I'm an outsider or something. And I'm just gonna say, I was born to be in it, bro. I was born to be in it. I was born to have... <laughs> unnecessary egregious praise heaped on me from a shitty mainstream media. That's what I was born to do, bro. Like, the problem with it was that it's goofy, and it's obvious that the media likes you, and they're trying to shove you down everybody's throats. So, do you like him? Look, he's a young, attractive man. He's a young, attractive man, and he speaks like a politician, and he won't rock the boat too much? He's a young, attractive man. He was born to be in a... Yeah. On to be in it. That's the problem with it was that it was goofy. So they asked, you know, they asked him about it. And if he was keeping it real, he could have said, like, yeah, I mean, I don't regret being on the cover, but yeah, it was a little goofy. Born to be in it. I mean, that, that is a little silly. But no, he gave a long fucking, like, two and a half minute diatribe of, like, oh, I'm privileged. I'm a white male, and I apologize for being a white male. Yeah, I'm so privileged. How many times did you say the word privilege in a two-minute clip? <laughs> privilege, you know, I'm just, I'm privileged. And, uh, you know, there's racism and sexism in the world, and it's bad. It's really bad. Oh, thank you, Beto. You're so brave. Oh, you're so brave. 
By the way, this is all he's got. I watched the whole interview, and there's another part where he goes off about Trump. The whole thing, he doesn't bring anything up about his destruction of our healthcare system, throwing 3 million people off of their insurance, doesn't bring anything up about war, doesn't bring anything up about the tax cut. All he's got is that he's a bigot. He's a bad, bad man. He's a bigot. Yeah, we know. We got that, like, fucking... From the second he brought up the Obama uh, birth certificate nonsense. The second he bought into birtherism, we were like, yep, yeah, okay, that's a little bigoted. From back in the day when he did the fucking Central Park Five, he was calling for, like, the death penalty for them. It turns out they were totally innocent. But he jumped to conclusions. Why? I don't know. They're young minorities. Fuck them. So that's, like... Yeah, we got it. We got it. He's a fucking bigot. He said, uh, you know... Yeah, the Mexicans, they're criminals, they're rapists. I assume some are good people. I want a total and complete shutdown of Muslims coming into this country until we can figure out what the hell is going on. Yeah, we got it, Beto. It's fucking easy. We got it. This is, see, this is why I hate corporate Democrats. They pick, they're like, oh, what's this here? Is this some low-hanging fruit I see? Mmm, yummy in my tummy. So in other words... It, you know what's actually bold and brave? What Ilhan Omar did, what Tulsi Gabbard did, the um, Rokhan as well. Hey, we shouldn't topple the Venezuelan government. Why is that bold and brave? Because the entire mainstream media is t screaming about how we should do it, and the entire deep state is trying to force us to do it. And it makes you look like, oh, are you coming out in favor of a dictator? Wow, that's terrible. They're not actually doing that. They're staying on principle and saying we shouldn't offensively invade countries and shouldn't be meddling in other countries. So when you come out against the entire political establishment and you say we shouldn't be, uh, go to Venezuela and be involved in Venezuela, that's actual bravery. You know what's fucking easy to say? Trump's a bigot. Congratulations. You know what's easy to say? I'm privileged! Oh, I'm so privileged! Please put me in the White House where I can be the most powerful person on the planet. But I'm so privileged! I think racism is bad. I think sexism is bad. He was asked about the Vanity Fair cover, and he somehow, in his answer, brought up slavery. Bro, what? <laughs> hey, do you think the Vanity Fair cover was a mistake? Slavery and segregation is very bad. I, for one, am not in favor of it. Did I win the black vote? Did you, do you guys like me now? I think sexism is bad. Women? Women, will you vote for me? I also have dreamy eyes. Uh. He was even asked, there's this thing he said about his wife on the campaign trail. And he was asked about that, too. He said, like, oh, I'm, like, raising my kids part-time. He said something along those lines. It was kind of a joke, but it's like, yeah, he's campaigning all the time. And people wrote, like, breathless articles. There were some, you know, social justice warrior types who were like, Oh, you're perpetuating the patriarchy by saying your wife needs to handle all that work. And he, again, he was like, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm, so, I'm a bad man. I'm a privileged bad man. I'm so privileged bad. Poop face. Poop. Poop. We're looking for a president, dog, not a virtue signaler in chief. <laughs> Can you please, please, please go away? You know what it is? Oh my God. Oh my God. Beto O'Rourke is the Jeb Bush of the 2020 20, uh, 20 election. That's what he is. He was the front runner for a brief like two and a half minutes when the media couldn't stop sucking him off. And then when uh, he actually started talking publicly and all he knew how to do was apologize for his existence, he just tanked in the polls. Please clap. Will you please clap? I'm a, I'm a tough guy. I eat, I eat, I wake up and I eat nails. And then I eat breakfast. The fuck? <laughs> Everybody was like, Jeb, what are you saying, man? That doesn't even make sense, dude. <laughs> Listen, this, it's weakness. This is weakness. I, I get it. He's trying to pander to get votes, but this is weakness. And it's not 1982 anymore, bro. You can't get away with, like, saying shit like this. The problem wasn't even the shit he said that they're trying to act like is outrageous, because it's not. The problem is you you bleed weakness. You drip weakness from every pore of your body. And nobody likes weakness. Doesn't matter who it is. Nobody likes that shit. You think, you think how would this guy hold up in a debate against Donald Trump? Are you kidding me? He'd be giving a long diatribe about, you know, Mr. President, I, uh, I, I'm not sure that your words accurately reflect 
the the nature of this great nation, and I'm not sure that you know you really uh, are a good representative because we have good people in this country, and we, sir, stand united against all forms of bigotry and xenophobia and racism. And I, for one, do not appreciate your foul language. And America, I think we're better than this. And it, pff, Trump will just open up the bowels of head on his face. <laughs> oh, what are you, fl flaily arms better over there? Listen, man. <laughs> we're making this, this country great again. We're doing tremendously well. The economy is beautiful. Big, beautiful economy, I have to tell you. Folks, you love to see it. You love to see this big, beautiful economy. Did you say something? I couldn't hear you through your arms waving nonstop. <laughs> Beto's the fucking, you know, thing you see outside of, um, car dealerships in Iowa, the flaily arm. <laughs> Trump would destroy this guy, and, um, if you can't see that, oh, goddamn. If somebody like Beto gets the nomination, uh, uh. I might go full nihilist on everybody. I might go full nihilist. <laughs> Please let Bernie win. Oh my god, he has to. If Beto runs, I think Trump is the favorite. If Beto gets to the general, I think Trump is the favorite. 